On this episode of Exactly How, we're going to show you how to unteach yourself some of the lessons that could really be hurting you, how to keep more of the money you earn, and how to have passive income coming in every month on this episode of Exactly How. You're listening to the Exactly How podcast, where you'll hear the underground, closely guarded wealth building secrets of successful people around the globe. Discover exactly how to improve your mental, physical, and financial health. Feel better, make more money, live, give, and prosper. In today's exciting, fast-paced world, filled with opportunity for those who know exactly how. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Connected Investors Podcast, Exactly How. During this episode, you're going to discover exactly how to have financial freedom as a woman. I'm really excited about this episode. For those of you who are new, my name is Ross Hamilton, today's host and the CEO of ConnectedInvestors.com and PrivateLenders.com. Today, we have the privilege to learn from a woman who has raised millions of dollars. She raised $2 million in one 60-minute webinar had an RV park deal running with a 25% cash on cash return. And some of her greatest success has come from everything she's done with her real estate investor goddesses, which I'm sure she'll talk about throughout this presentation. Prior to her career as a real estate investor, she was a corporate litigator, yoga teacher, and abundance coach. What an amazing mix of talents. But all that changed after a two day syndication seminar she was in a hotel gym on an elliptical working out and just kind of had this epiphany. She's like, there were only nine women out of 120 at this seminar. I need to do something to help correct this, 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 I don't know, unbalance in the real estate investing world. And I would describe our guest as a very dedicated and inspiring person. Her name is Monique. And today she is going to explain exactly how to have financial freedom as a woman. Monique, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here, Ross. Yeah. Before we dive in on how to have financial freedom as as a woman, uh, you contribute a lot of your success to listening to your intuition. Why do you think this has played such a huge role in your success? I think, well, one, I've learned the hard way when I've ignored my intuition and, and it hasn't worked out versus when I've learned to follow it. Uh, You know, I, I grew up as a lawyer, very left brain. It's all about logic. And many times I I would ignore that, that voice inside or that feeling in my, my gut. And every time I did that, I went, that did not work so well. (laughs) So I just started to learn to follow it and it's taken me on these crazy journeys, but I'm always thrilled with where I end up when I listen to my intuition. So that's, I think I, I credit my intuition with where I am now. Yeah. So it sounds like your, your first life as, as a lawyer, it was all line of logic based. And now this much more uh, financially free, fulfilling life that you have is much more intuition based. So yes. Yeah, that's really, that's really exciting. Well, for everyone who's new, what makes the Exactly How Financial Freedom podcast very unique is every show comes with a detailed action plan. We're going to pull all the steps out of our guests' heads and create a blueprint for you on how to implement exactly what we're covering. So if you're driving, you don't have to worry about taking notes. All of this is going to be detailed out and even some free gifts at exactlyhow.com. You can visit the URL right there. In addition, to getting the notes and the free gifts, you can throw your name in the hat to win a free software, the pre-MLS software that shows you every motivated seller in your market. So you can find every vacant house, every pre-foreclosure, every foreclosure, every inherited property, and you can even see the individual's contact info. So you can pick up the phone, give them a call, and start working toward financial freedom. This is a $3,000 software that we're going to give one of our listeners that went to exactlyhow.com and threw their name into the hat in just a few moments. So... Monique, as we, uh, as we dive into this, can you just explain um, financial freedom? I'm going to ask you two questions. First and foremost, what does financial freedom mean to you? Financial freedom means to me that you have enough passive income streams that it can um, meet all of your expenses, replace your working income. And I think once you have your expenses met, through passive income, then you, your time is yours. You can continue to work if you desire, but you don't have to. And I believe that when, um, when people have financial freedom, especially women, when they have, a, they have more, they tend to give back 
to their families, to their communities, and to the world. So that's partly why I'm so passionate and why my mission is to help 1 million women create financial freedom through real estate investing. Well, we're going to be helping. Uh, hopefully we can help contribute to that during this show. And the, the other awesome. question I want to uh, jump into here is uh, focusing on uh, you know, the female aspect of this show. Um, in your opinion, why do you think that's different than, or is it, than the, than the male aspect of the show? So, um, I mean, I, as you had mentioned before, I started focusing on women when I, when I went to this conference. I actually had gone to many real estate conferences, and the rooms would be are generally about 90 plus percent men. And, um, and I thought, somebody's got to change that because this is a really great business for women. It, it creates this flexibility. It's wonderful for, you know, if you're, you have a family or, and it also is helps to, to bridge that wealth gap. There's a gender wealth gap. So a lot of people know that there's an income gap, right? For every dollar that a man makes, a woman makes only 77 cents. When you're talking about net worth, it's way worse for every dollar of net worth that a single man has. A single woman only has 23 cents. Oh, wow. And it gets even, the number is even crazier if you factor in race, um, you know, uh, or a, a white woman will have 50 cents to the dollar and a black or Latina woman has less than one penny to the dollar. Um, so it's, it was, it's something that I'm very passionate about helping to, to like, to bridge that gap. And, um, but we, there's more. So as women, Women, it's we're different from guys, not just on a chromosomal level. There, there are some differences in how we um, how we best learn and how we best deal with stress and how we are um, are best able to work and how we approach money and investing. And so, what I what I teach is to, how do you do that in a way that honors the women that we are, and so we can do it in a way that is you know, best according to our natures. Yeah. Yeah. You know, completely not on the same level in any way. Uh, when I first started investing in real estate, I started at like 19 or 20 years, 19 years old. I started to go to meetings and uh, go to seminars and everyone there was older than me. And it was a, uh, looking back on it now, uh, standing out was a huge competitive, competitive advantage for me. Uh, looking back at, at the time, I felt so, you know, inferior to everyone else. Um, and it was just a lot of old white dudes, <laughs> really. I mean, in this, yeah. that, were, that were, that were at <laughs> the meeting that, that were, that were doing what they were doing. And, uh, so I eventually, when I realized that, you know, my, me being different was actually, uh, a way for people to remember me, right. Oh, that young kid. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Anyway, it's, it, it's not the same in any way, shape or form, but, uh, it was, uh, you know, anyway, whenever you were telling your story about the seminar, I felt, uh, out of place being young, but everyone was so encouraging for me being young. They're like, Oh, it's so great. You're here. I wish I was here when I was 19 years old, I'd be done already. You know? So, yeah. so when, before the show, we talked, no, I think, I think, that's good. No, I, I completely agree. And I always say, you know, a lot of people think, well, gosh, I'm not older white man like most of the people in this room. That's, that's going to be, that's going to make it harder for me. And I, I say, no, it's actually a benefit to not be Waldo, to not look like everybody in the room, to, to stand out in some way. And so I think that is actually an advantage for a lot of women um, and or younger people or people yeah. of color, anyone who's different from the majority of the room. It's, yeah. I think it's great when you're not Waldo. You yeah. don't want to, you don't want to just blend. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's interesting. You know, I have, a, I have a daughter now. She's two years old. And uh, the doctor just told us that she's going to be six feet tall. Right? So I'm like, yes, she's going to be a tall, powerful businesswoman. But then you know, there are some women were like, oh, no, she's going to be tall. Oh, it's going to be tough. And I'm like, you know, I, I didn't see it that way. But there's, there's a lot of these weird things that we actually have to unlearn, which is what we're going to talk about here. Because Monique and I were talking about kind of the three main steps, the, the big takeaways for this particular episode. Step one was unlearning. Step two yeah. was, um, I have horrible actual handwriting here. I'm, I'm, I'm in that. Making your money work for you. <laughs> making, your, making your money work for you, yes. And then keep more of what you get. 
So you're the expert yeah. on it. So thanks for filling in those blanks. Let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about unlearning and what that what that means for for you and for a woman and anyone who needs to unlearn something. Yeah. So um, for me to create financial freedom required that I unlearn certain things that I had been taught. Uh, on one was, and I have great parents who are super supportive. I'm a first generation American. My parents are from Haiti. And when I was growing up, they told me, you can be anything you want. And in parentheses, as long as you're a doctor, lawyer, professor, engineer, <laughs> like, that, was, that was success for them. And that was like, if you do that, you're going to be happy and you're going to be rich, right? You're going to be happy, wealthy wise. And um, I was a dutiful daughter. I became an attorney. I chose, that was my, that was the one I chose out of that, that array of choices that I was given. And I was miserable. I was miserable as an attorney. And um, just to give you a, like a quick anecdote to, to explain, at one point my appendix ruptured, I ended up in the hospital. And I remember it was a Tuesday morning and the doctor told me I'd have to be in the hospital several days. I ended up being in the hospital for nine days. And then I'd have at least 30 days at home to recover. And my first thought when he told me that was, oh, thank God I don't have to go to work. And my next thought was, oh God, that's so bad. Like I realized, I didn't realize quite how unhappy I was until that moment. And when, and I just was like, but I've done everything everybody has told me, right? Like I, I did this college and in school, like Ivy League law, you know, law school, I'm in the partnership track and it's a big firm and making six figures, I should be deliriously happy, right? But I was miserable. And, um, and I wasn't free. I had these golden handcuffs. I had law school loans. I had a lifestyle to which I'd become accustomed that I wanted to live. I didn't want to necessarily go off the grid and live like a pauper. Um, and so I just, I had to figure out another way, but that, you know, a lot of us are taught that, you know, you get the best, go to college, get the best job you can, and that'll be your, your path. But that is not freedom. Um, freedom, like we said before, is when you have passive income streams and nobody ever taught me about creating passive income. I just, I, you know, you, you work and you put some money in a 401k that you get when you're 65, but you, you will work until, you know, you're going to, you're going to work. That's not freedom. And, um, so learning, and so having to unlearn that and learning that really to build wealth and to, to get, create financial freedom you're going to need to get your money working for you, which is step two. And another thing that I had to unlearn as a woman, because a lot of times, you know, we're taught in this very much no pain, no gain. You got to muscle through, work hard, like really like man up. That's a very masculine way of approaching life. And for women, we don't do as well when we're trying to muscle through and man up uh, that like that can blow our adrenals and our, you know, the, um, what works better for us is actually if we pleasure through, if we figure out what feels good um, and how to move in that way. Also when we're more intuitive as opposed to logic, um, logic based and the logic is, is valuable, but our intuition factors in that logic plus all of this other subconscious super conscious information that we don't have on this conscious level so being able to tap into our woman's intuition guys have it too but being able to tap into that intuition plus guys pleasure have, guys have women intuition not guy intuition <laughs> they have they have no. intuition yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but women tend to be more connected no, to absolutely. their intuition um and and so and we're, we're just, I guess a lot of women are more used to the feeling it. Um, but it's just, we're taught not to trust it. We're taught to, oh, if it's not logical, don't follow that. Just, you know, it has to make sense. Um, and so that it required unlearning that um, for me and, um, you know, learning different ways, how to, you know, how to, how to be different in order to create wealth. Yeah. So any other like big things that a woman has to unlearn to, to have the confidence that anyone really needs to make it in, in real estate or any business venture that you could, you can kind of think of. Yeah. So other, um, so there, there are four things that I, I say is part of the goddess secret sauce. So the one is pleasure. The two is intuition. Three is mindset. 
So, so you were talking about confidence and so much of that comes from the subconscious beliefs we have in our heads about what we can do, what we can't do about what wealth is, what, you know, wealthy people are, you know, a lot of people are like, Oh, the, the 1% or the, you know, they have this, or pe- which people are greedy or money is the root of all evil. If you have any of that running in the background, that's going to keep you from taking the actions that you need to take in order to, to be successful. So being able to figure out what are those limiting beliefs and get more empowering beliefs is a big part of this is that mindset piece. And lastly for women, it's sisterhood. We actually do um, super well in, in groups of supportive women. There's a hormone oxytocin, which is a bonding hormone. It's a feel good hormone. And it's released in women in one of three ways. So when we're breastfeeding, when we're making love, and when we're in groups of women. So we're really like hardwired. Our brain goes, yay, <laughs> you know, in those three, in those three instances. And it, it really, we're, we're wired to be in communities of women. It reduces stress. We learn better. And, um, and we, that we tend to be happier. So all of those are part of the, the goddess secret sauce for women. I, I, love, I love the science behind it as well, because we all know intuition. We all know there's something there, but if you can't logically kind of talk about it, it goes over some people's heads. So to talk about the science of uh, you know, what releases the things inside of you, it's really interesting to hear. And uh, I know a lot of people resonate really well with that. Now in this, in this free book that you're, uh, this free PDF or blueprint that you're giving away, uh, at exactlyhow.com. Well, what will people find in that? So they're going to find the seven steps that you need to take in order to become a successful investor. And um, I, I, sh- I share it sort of a bit like the uh, building a house. You talk about like what's the foundation you need in terms of your team and your market, and um, and the the mindset piece and the. Um, you know, education and all of the pieces that you need in order to be successful as an, an investor. So it's that blueprint. That I'm, yeah, thanks I'm so much. With for you sh- and gifting as all your listeners. Yeah, thank you so much. And you know, you mentioned uh, something I forgot to touch on about being in groups and how and how powerful that that can be for you know for for a woman. And real estate is a very network oriented business. That yes. you know, the more groups of people that you're surrounding yourself with, I mean, the more successful you are. So it's nice to have that natural uh, you know, tendency to want to pull those, uh, pull groups of people together like that. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about um, having your money work for you. We've talked about this, this passive income to where, hey, if you uh, want to take a trip, you want to sleep late, you got money coming in, you got all your bills covered. Um, mm-hmm. Let's talk about getting your money to work for you and what that really does. Yeah. So you know, sure your, your audience, they're, they're into investing. So mm-hmm. hopefully you, you guys all get that. Um, but you know, a lot of us are, we're taught that you trade your time for money. Um, and so you're working for your money, but really you have to get your money working for you. And if you can buy a property and you get in a tenant and they're paying you rent and after your expenses, what, what's left over is what you get to keep. And like you said, even if you're on vacation or sleeping or <laughs> working on another job, that money is coming in. And, um, and if you, you just get enough of that, then that's how you create financial freedom. You have um, that money coming in every month and it's, a more, it's enough or more than enough to meet your expenses, meet your goals, create the lifestyle that you want. Then you are free because then your time becomes your own. Yeah. That's really important. I mean, I drove the worst car around forever because I was so obsessed with, with passive income. And once I had enough passive income to pay for the car of my dreams, I was still so addicted to uh, my, my debt being low, my debt servicing being low and my income being high that, gosh, I drove a 1998 Buick Riviera around. Great car. Uh, you know, and so I, I had many millions of dollars in equity and in, in the bank before I even bought a new car because I had that ingrained in me at a young age uh, as a real estate investor, passive income, right? That car's yeah. not going to, I only wanted to buy things that would make me money. It got assets. A little, yeah, exactly. <laughs> buy assets, not liabilities. <laughs> exactly. I was just obsessed with, with buying assets and I was living really poor for a while. 
because I would just take any money I had, any passive income, and I'd go buy another asset with it. But after, uh, after yeah. a while, when you plant all of those seeds, you look around and you're like, oh man, I got plenty to eat. <laughs> Like yeah. I'm okay. I can have a nice, a little nice thing now. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. What do they say if you if you do the things that are hard now, then your life will be easy. And if you do the things that are easy now, then your life will be hard. So sometimes it's it's like being able to tighten the belt a little bit, so you have a little bit more that you can invest. You're planting those seeds, and then once you're you know those those trees start to sprout, and you can put pick the fruit, then you can coast. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to take a little bit of a, a little bit of a left turn here, um, mm -hmm. and just ask you a question about uh, finding the time, right? For someone who is is busy, uh, you know, maybe it's a it's a working mother that you know doesn't have much time. How have you? How do you talk to people about carving out a little extra time to invest in uh, you know, activities that will build that passive income? Yeah. Um, time is so important. And um, a lot of my, the, the women that join my group, my, my goddesses, they're busy professional women. So there are a lot of different ways of investing in, in real estate. It's not all one size fits all. And for busy people who don't necessarily want to deal with the, the three T's, the tenants, toilets, termites, they don't necessarily want to have another job. They're, they're passive investments. So one of the things that we do is we bring groups of investors together to purchase larger commercial projects, uh, apartment buildings, and, um, and uh, or in office parks, things like that. So that's a way for people who want to invest and want to have their money working for them, and they're not having to work for that. Um, they're not having to do the work. They once you vet the deal, you put in your money, and then you just wait for it to come back with friends. And yeah. um, so that's a really great strategy for people who are busy and that, um, and oftentimes people think, well, okay, well, if I'm going to do it passively, I'm not going to make as much as if I were to go off and do it all myself. But that's not true, especially for people who live in expensive markets like me. I live in Los Angeles and a lot of our deals that are in different, you know, like we're doing apartment buildings in Atlanta and and we have deals in Houston, Texas, people are making a lot, our passives make a lot more than I make with some of my properties here in LA where I, you know, I've had to self-manage and do all the work just because the returns are better. So um, it can be a great strategy for busy people. If you don't, if you don't have the time to, to do it, you can passively invest. Now, is that a, did you give us a little glimpse into how you raised $2 million in one 60 minute webinar? Yeah, pretty much. Because here's the thing. Uh, if you, it's not about me raising the money. It's providing an opportunity for someone. If their money's sitting in the bank, if they're lucky, it's making 1%. Um, and, or they might be really nervous about what's happening in the stock market and how it's been going up for a long time and it's about due to drop. So for people who want to have, um, tax beneficial, you know, uh, their money working in tax beneficial ways, making double digit returns, they're pretty happy to, um, to get invested. So I, when I first got into this business, I thought, gosh, it's going to be really hard to find the money. Like people are going to want to put in money for these types of things. And I realized that that's actually the easy part. <laughs> Finding the right deal is the, is the harder part because when, if the deal makes sense, people are really happy to have their money working for them. Yeah, money is hard to raise when your deal sucks, is the, the other way to yes, say and it. Yes, and it should be. <laughs> it should yeah. be hard to raise if you have a sucky deal. If yeah, your deal right. is crap, then that, you shouldn't, people should not put their money into it. Yeah, um, if, if the yeah. deal is good, everything else just kind of falls into place, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, and the stock market right now is kind of all over the board. So there's so much money that that's, that's flooding into real estate and keeping your eyes open yeah. for opportunity is, uh, is huge. You know, in the, uh, in the early days, I, was a, I had a lot of time but not much money. So I was wholesaling properties. I was putting together the deals. Now, I, it's the opposite. I don't have a lot of time, but I have a lot of money. So I invest in a lot of different, a lot of different properties and the returns are, you know, are amazing that we're able to get yeah. on, on real estate and it's safe because it's in, safer, right? Something yes. I understand. 
which yeah. is real estate. And most people on the line, if you live in a house, you understand real estate a little bit more than you understand the economics of investing in a stock, right? Everybody. And all yeah, every, everyone interacts with real estate all day, every day, right? Yeah. Um, so it's something that people get that you're, you know, people need places to live. People need places for to work, um, and their stores and they, they get like, like there's, there's land, and there's buildings. Um, so it's, yeah, it's easy to understand and there's value in that. Um, uh, it's very close to impossible for that value to go to zero, like a, unlike a, an Enron, right? It could be a multi-billion dollar business that gets to zero. It's not going to happen with land because there's value there. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, you know, and it's, it. It, it's funny because I talk to people and everyone, everyone who owns a house is a real estate investor, whether they realize it or not, it might just be a not, not a very good one. If you pay retail <laughs> for your house, you're, you're a real estate, you, you bought real estate, you've invested in that real estate, you just, you're not very good yeah. at it. If you're yeah. renting, you're playing the monopoly game, you're just, you know, on the other side of the board, you're paying yeah. up but you're not getting any of the benefits. So we're all in the real estate game one way or another. So you definitely got to open your eyes. And actually, before we jump into our third step, I want to announce the winner of our pre-MLS software that shows you all of the best discounted real estate in any market across the United States. Plus, you can see every flip that's happening in your area. So you can see who's flipping, who's making money, how much money they're making, great individuals to uh, reach out to and network with. And the winner of this episode's pre-MLS software is... Mike Amin. Mike, congratulations. Yay. <laughs> Connected Investors will be reaching out to you. You went to exactlyhow.com to get the gifts that we gave away during an episode and you got a $3,000 gift uh, coming to you right now. So congratulations. All right, Mike. Let's get on to number three. Keep more of what you get. And it, it's not what you make. It's what you keep. Keep. Oh, yes. Gosh. So let's go ahead and talk about this uh, this subject that's very near and dear to my heart. Yeah, so it's not what you make, it's what you keep. So there, I mean, there's the, the obvious one that people will tell you, don't spend everything you make. <laughs> some, right? <laughs> Try to keep some and then reinvest that and let it grow. Yeah. Um, so that, that's, on the, that's one of the more common pieces of advice. But let me talk about it in a couple different ways that people don't often talk about it. So one is, so a lot of people assume that the more you make, the more you pay in taxes. The more you make, the more income, the more your taxes are. And that is not true. That is not how the tax code is written. Um, when you are investing in real estate, because whoever, the powers that be decided they wanted to promote real estate investing and they wanted to uh, reward real estate investors. So well, hold on one second here. Rich property owners were probably the ones who sketched out all the tax codes in the beginning. <laughs> so well, I, you know, it's funny. I, I heard that it started in the, this, these, all these benefits are in the 1940s because they thought that if people owned properties, they wouldn't become communist. Okay. And, Interesting. but, you know, <laughs> so I, that's what, that was part of the, you know, when they were giving all those wow. benefits, that was part of the, the debate. It was like a okay. pro, like a pro capitalist, um, uh, a move. But beyond that, like our president, who is a real estate, inve our real estate investor and developer in chief, you know, passed the tax law in 2017. That is super, super good for real estate investors. It was, it was always good. It's even better nowadays. And, um, you know, one of the things people don't realize is that often because of the way the tax code is structured, you are making income in real estate, but it looks like a loss. And it looks like you've lost money, um, even though you've made money. So you get to keep that money, but you're not, you don't, you're not often paying taxes on that money. And it, it is a, um, you end up saving on other income. So I have a friend who's a super successful business person, three multi-million dollar businesses, found himself owing $500,000 to the IRS one year and found out that about these benefits of real estate, ended up buying an apartment building and that tax, and even though the apartment building is making really good income, tax bill went from 500,000 to zero, to zero. And that's the, that's the beauty of taxes. So not only are you making that money on the real estate, but you are making money on the other end of what you're not giving to Uncle exactly. Sam. So that is a, that's a big benefit. So something to think about not just what you 
you get, you pay and you earn, but what'd you get to keep? The other thing is it's really important when you're doing, um, when you're investing to think about asset protection and how you, um, because we live in a very litigious society, unfortunately. Coming from I, attorney. Uh, I'm going to, yeah, I was a, I'm a recovered attorney. I don't practice law anymore. And I, I got sued actually a couple years ago. Um, my dog, it was Halloween and we were crossing the street. My dog bit somebody on the leg. Like my dog is about, it was about 10 pounds, a little bite, but it did break skin. So there was a little blood, but not really nothing that a, a Band-Aid, a little, a little antibiotic ointment and Band-Aid wouldn't fix. But I was trying to be a good Samaritan, so I gave my card and I said, hey, you know, my dog's had all, all his shots, but if you go to the doctor, if you have some medical bills, let me know. I'll be happy to cover them. And a week later, I got a, lawyer, a letter from a lawyer and they're suing me. They ended up suing me for, wait for it, $1.2 million because not only was the bite and like soft tissue damage, but her two kids and her husband who were there were all traumatized from the experience, blah, 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 blah. blah. So luckily I had good insurance um, and I was a, they, they handled it, but having good, I, now I've known to have all of my assets off in little entities and not necessarily connected by names and people can look up and go, Oh, deep pockets. And then they'll sue you. Um, so partly it's figuring out like how to, how do you buy things smartly and um, making sure you have a good insurance because dog bites happen, floods happen, slip and falls happen. And you just want to make sure that you are protected. So all your hard work you get to keep. Yeah. That's really uh, an eye opening story there. I, I would, I was going to say if I, in my head, I was guessing a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand. One point two. Million. One point two million, and you, you had to deal with that. So that's uh, yeah. Wow. So you got to be careful out there. Got to be careful out there. Just keep yourself protected. Keep keep what you make. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, you know, my my asset protection attorney would always uh, talk about having different things in different pockets. Right. Someone can pick that pocket, but you have fifty different pockets, a little bit everywhere, and uh, yeah, and a little lint in that pocket that can get. Yeah. <laughs> And you'll, and you'll be okay. Any, uh, any other words of advice for some of the women that are watching this? So my, my advice is to, I mean, the main thing is to know that you can do this. Um, I was just at a Tony Robbins event um, in Las Vegas and he says, your success is 80% psychology, 20% strategy. So 80% of the psychology, know that you have what it takes. You can do it. And just if you're, if you're here and you're listening, I know you're smart enough that you can figure it out. You just got to get around the right people and learn and, um, and, um, and know that you can do it. Yeah. What do you think your life would be like if you never invested in real estate? Oh my gosh. That makes me sad. <laughs> think about. Um, I, I think because I, I was a total accidental investor. It was just like a series of happy accidents that got me into it because nobody ever taught me about it. Um, if I'd never invested in real estate, I guess I'd probably be hustling, doing some other work. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be hustling, hustling, working in a, other, in other jobs, working hard, a lot harder than I am now. Probably, probably still an attorney rep, 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 <laughs> representing yeah. people that uh, get bit by <laughs> I wasn't that kind of attorney, but <laughs> I, I don't know if I could have been an attorney much longer. It was really, really too miserable, but I would have been doing something else and I would have, yeah, I was working really hard. Yeah. You're, you're, you were breaking up a little bit there, but uh, the last person that we interviewed just answered the question with one word. He said, miserable. I'd be miserable. Yeah, so pretty much. Yeah. Well, let's jump into the rapid fire portion of this podcast. I'm going to ask you a few questions and just the first thing that comes into your mind. Okay. You ready? Yeah. On a scale of one to 10, how strict were your parents? My parents were a seven. Get up early or stay up late? Early. How many hours of sleep do you get? A six if I'm lucky. Favorite or most recent book that you read? 
favorite or most recent book? Um, I'm reading The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. <laughs> I saw Mark that Hansen. in a, uh, you know, I saw that in a, uh, in a bookshop somewhere and I opened it up and I'd actually just got back from a trip to Iceland. And in the book, it's literally said, no one cares about your trip to Iceland. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I stopped talking about it after that book. And uh, you're like, I care. <laughs> yeah. I'm I like, give an F about my trip. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> all right. Back, yeah, back to the question. Uh, if you could be any superhero, who would it be? Wonder Woman. There you go. Great movie. Um, <laughs> yeah. What is something everyone should do less of? Watch TV. What is something everyone should do more of? Mm. Go out in nature. Will people visit Mars in your lifetime? Uh, I, yeah, I think so. Bitcoin, bang or bust? Depends on when you bought it. <laughs> now I <I'm> bust. <laughs> what, what do you think the year of the next recession will be? Oh, I wish I knew. Um, I'm going to say 2021. 2021. All right. Thank you so very much for sharing all your insight on our show today. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. For everyone else who is still on the line, congratulations. You finished what you started. Only 30% of people ever make it to the end of any podcast but you stuck with us all the way through this. You learned some great stuff. Hopefully you visited exactlyhow.com to go ahead and grab your free gifts and throw your name into the software, all, uh, the software giveaway. All we ask from you is that you, you know, give us a thumbs up if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube. You tag someone you know. You share this information. Interact with us in some way, shape, or form. That's what drives us to keep delivering you this fantastic content. So until the next episode of Exactly How, I'll see you on the inside of Connected Investors. The Connected Investors app connects you with investors, notifies you of available properties, helps locate cash buyers, and secure private funding to close deals. Set up in seconds to become a member of the Connected Investors social network. Now you can scroll through your main feed to find cash buyers, see investment properties not available to the general public, and network with investors by adding your own comments to a thread to keep the conversation going. The Control Center is your connection to add properties to sell, start new discussions, connect with local investors, and even find private funding. The Notifications tab will keep you alerted to new investment properties and offers. You'll also find new friend requests to connect directly with the community to build your network. From the Property Marketplace, you'll be able to find favorite, and make offers on investment properties. Download Connected Investors today to find, figure, fund, and flip investment properties on the go.